Smith, and she joins us now with more on the special. Hi, Alex. Hi, Neil and Dickie. How are you guys doing today? We're doing great. So there's, um, uh, there's a segment on Sarah Cannon we all know as our treasure, Minnie Pearl. Right, absolutely. This was a really fun story for me to work on it's from Centerville over in Hickman County. I got to go over there and actually chat with her great niece, which was an amazing experience. You know, you got to hear all of those stories about her growing up, going over to Minnie's house and just hearing about how wonderful of a person she was um, just really made for a great story. It told itself, really. When she was growing up, she was the youngest of her family and her sisters were always dressing her up in these little outfits. And her niece says, you know, that was the moment she thinks Minnie Pearl was born when she was dressing up as a little girl. So I think it was a really great uh, start to her life. And she went off to study expression at Ward Belmont. And she really didn't want to be a comedian. She really wanted to be a serious, dramatic Broadway actress. So a lot of people don't realize that she kind of stumbled into this. Her niece, Mary Beth Pruitt, says because she was just so naturally funny. Oh, my gosh, that's so fascinating. What else did you learn? So basically, she got her start. She was uh, at a bankers convention in Centerville and a gentleman came up to her and asked if she would provide entertainment at the convention. And she said, yes, of course. And he asked, would you do that quote, mini pearl thing that you do, right? And so she says, of course. So she does this for the crowd. Well, a man in the audience by the name of Bob Turner saw this whole thing. He called the Opry and said, you guys need her. She's great. So what happened? They called her for an audition the next day. Then she becomes a star at the Grand Ole Opry for 50 years. I mean, it just so happens that you never know who's in the audience and who's going to see you perform. And this is just proving that, like, her dream came out of nowhere, absolutely nowhere. No one will forget the price tag that she used to always yeah. have hanging from her hat when she performed at the Opry for some 50-odd years, I guess. And then, then, of course, she went on to live. She took the house next to the governor's mansion and lived there right. for many, many years. So if you went to see the governor's mansion, you were also going on a tour of Minnie Pearl's house. Absolutely. And, you know, we can't forget that she wasn't only a legend in country music. She was also a legend in comedy. She was inducted into the Comedy Hall of Fame. She was the first woman before Lucille Ball. A lot of people don't realize that. But that's another thing that I've learned about Minnie is that she was just so funny. People still talk about those classic jokes to this day. Her niece says those are some of the main jokes that her family still tells. Now, she is the only one still in Centerville, but they are still representing Minnie really well over there. They're currently working on a life-size new bronze statue that'll be there by spring. And so that's gonna be really exciting. That was created by an artist by the name of Jennifer Grisham over in Columbia. So you can just tell that Middle Tennessee doesn't ever wanna forget Minnie. No. Very and cool. I love this 225 project. Too. Yeah, the stories are all on our website. Just look for the 225 logo there. Alex, Thank thanks, you, Alex. we appreciate that. Thanks guys, bye-bye.